So are we live? <laughs> Apparently we're live. All right. All right. <laughs> Welcome to 2014. This is Carlos Castellanos. I'm from uh, drawnbysuccess.com and a syndicated cartoonist. Uh, I'm out here with my buddy Bob Ostrom from Bob Teaches Art. How you doing, Bob? I'm doing great. So, yeah, we finally got this thing rolling. We've only been here for about an hour and a half now, which is nice. So. Well, you know, we're, Bob and I are trying some new things out this year, so... Uh, Google Hangouts is one of those new things for us, and we're trying to just. This is actually more like a test run. I don't, I, we don't even know if it's going to show up on the on the live feed or not, or if it's going to be recorded. Or we'll find out in half an hour. <laughs> I learned but, more of these guys, so I wish we could share them with other people. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens with this. Um, Bob and I. The purpose of this call for Bob and I, if 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 it is being recorded and you are watching this at some point, is. Bob and I were evaluating uh, 2013 for for each other, for ourselves, our own businesses, and seeing you know what what came up, where we came up short, and what things we need to change moving forward to accomplish the goals that we wanted to do, and uh, also to talk about maybe a couple of things that we've experienced, you know, talking with other illustrators that encounter issues getting stuff done, or maybe not, you know, getting the amount of clients or generating the amount of work that they wanted to in 2013 and we were going to talk a little bit about uh, maybe one of those some of those hurdles that we see people experiencing and from our own point of view our own perspective and from uh, our experience talking to other people so what do you think Bob? Yeah uh, that's that's right Carlos you know um, at this time of year usually what ends up happening is you kind of look back on some of the things that you did last year you start to think about some of the things you can do to improve your situation uh, some things you might be able to do differently, um, and then you know, trying to set some goals up for yourself. So I figured, you know, while we were talking about that stuff, why not, you know, get some people involved with us and and start to get them on board. You know, like I said at the beginning of the show, you and I get together um, once a week and we start to talk about these things, and inevitably, about halfway through the conversation, we think, you know, we should have recorded this. So one of the the uh, first resolutions that we're making this year is we're recording this. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, that way we don't lose any of this stuff. And we think we're to, recording this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that way you guys get to share in the fun. Now, you know, of, co of course we're, we're still in the learning process, but that doesn't mean that the information that we're going to share here is any less valuable. It just means that we're a couple of hacks and we don't know what we're doing when it comes to using <laughs> Google Plus and a, and a chat hangout. But um, so, so when... Last time we got together, you know, we were talking about, um, you know, uh, making these resolutions and things. And every year, people seem to make resolutions, and uh, you know, inevitably, uh, you know, February comes rolling around, and, the, and half of those resolutions have gone in the wind, out the window. And then by the time March comes rolling around, you've completely forgotten about them. You've fallen back into the same old pattern, and, and all of a sudden, you realize, you know, hey, um, you know those resolutions, why aren't they working for me, and what do I got to do to get that to happen, you know, how do I make those changes, because otherwise, you know, you're just, you're, you're traveling down the same path year after year, and, you know, you're not growing, nothing's happening, and you're wondering, like, why, you know, why am I in the same spot I was uh, last year, the year before, you know, or, or um, you know, is this going to happen again this year, so, you know, we started to talk about you know, what kind of things can you do um, to make those changes stick, you know? How do we get those to uh, to be something that becomes a daily routine rather than just a New Year's resolution, you know? Because, uh, you know, in my opinion, New Year's resolutions are for the birds, you know? They just, it just never works. So how do we get this stick, Carlos? Uh, well, for me, you know, I, and I don't profess to be an expert in anything, so... <laughs> well, You're an expert in there. Google+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I, I can only speak from personal experience, you know, and the the times, and even this last year, and we've talked about this, and, you know, I don't mind talking about this and having everybody listen. I think we can all learn something from, from everyone. So, you know, for me personally, it, it's always been a matter of not having the right focus where it needs to be. In other words, there there's a, this bird's eye view of what I want to accomplish, but either I get involved in doing some of those I accomplish and what I don't get accomplished, it's a matter of not doing the right things at the right time or doing the right things sequentially. You know, there's a certain order that you got to do stuff. You can't just go out running willy-nilly and, 
and and start marketing your work without having without knowing who your market is you know what I mean so there are certain things that you got to identify along the way um, that that'll help you accomplish your goal uh, you got to break it down to smaller chunks and smaller pieces and you know for me it's also a matter of finding out why you want to do something because what I found is you know you inexplicably get you know, sidetracked when something gets difficult or you r run up a, against a roadblock. And if your why isn't strong enough, why you want to do something, something else is, it makes it very easy for something to come in and, and take your attention away. Has that been your experience, Bob? Or? Yeah, but, you know, also the other thing that I run into is not necessarily that I'm, you know, that it's, uh, I'm not determined enough to do it, but, you know, I'm falling back into to the same old patterns, you know, so um, I'm not sure if it's a comfort level thing or not, but, you know, you get you, you start to get into um, making a change, and then um, you know, three days later, um, you know, you're back in your same pattern. You know, and 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 I'm not sure if it's because um, you know it's a painful thing uh, to to make these changes, or if it's because you know, oh, now I'm, I'm stuck. I'll, I'll just put it aside for a minute. I think it's really a combination of a lot of different things. You know, um, so so when we were talking before, we were talking about you know. What are some things that you can do to kind of help this along? And, and one of the ones that we talked about, I thought was really great, which was um, teaming up with somebody and, and doing what we were calling the buddy system, you know, where you, you have uh, somebody who sort of holds you accountable, you know. So I say, hey, Carlos, I'm going to do this. And then, you know, we get together uh, every Friday and we talk about some of the things that we've done and, and some of the difficulties that we might have had getting those things done. Um, but the nice part for me is that I know that Friday's going to come rolling around. If I didn't get it done, you know, Carlos is going to kind of hold my feet to the fire and be like, "Hey, Bob, what's up, man? Where are those testimonials you're supposed to, you're supposed to put on your website?" <laughs> <laughs> you know that kind of stuff. Well, where's so, the video replay you promised everybody? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know, so so I think that is a really uh, strong way to get things moving in the right direction is to kind of you know, team up with a uh, partner or uh, with a group of people and to start to um, talk about, you know, what are the things that you need to do? Because you already know what they are. I mean, I know what I need to do. I'm sure you probably know what you need to do. And I'm sure everybody who's listening to this or watching this, if this gets recorded, <laughs> knows what they need to do to get things to, to, to go in the direction that they want them to go in. But for some reason, uh, they haven't gone that way. So if you could put together, you know, like a little group to kind of say, okay, here is what I know needs to happen, and it's going to happen by this date, or at least I'm going to make some forward progress on it. And even if it's just the smallest little thing, even if you're just, you know, you're, you're moving ahead uh, by inches, at least you're moving ahead, you know, and you're not stuck back in, in you know, uh, the previous year where, you know, you fell apart, and then all of a sudden you get to the end of the year, and you're like, what happened to my business? Why didn't it go anywhere, you know? So yeah. I, I'm a really strong advocate for getting together with, you know, a, a friend or uh, another artist or, or somebody to, to kind of uh, form a buddy system and, and make sure that the two of you or the, or the group of you um, hold each other accountable and get you through what needs to happen. Yeah, so, so first identify, you know, take a look back in, on 2013 and, and figure out, you know, what was it that at the beginning of the year that you wanted to accomplish for yourself, whether it be a certain amount of clients or a financial goal that you wanted? I know a lot of illustrators right now are struggling with financially because the illustration industry has changed. The traditional illustration industry has changed tremendously over the last decade. Um, so a lot of us are, are, are struggling to, to make the numbers that we were making before and finding new clients. So maybe take a look back and, and find out what goals did you want to achieve that you didn't achieve you know, at the end, of, by the end of the year, and, and and identify what those are, and then why it didn't happen. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, maybe you didn't do what you needed to do. There's, I have a lot of clients, coaching clients that you know do 80 percent, 75 percent of what they need to do. Um, I there's a lot of things that I dropped the ball on. Uh, we've talked about it and made it. You know, now we're making it public. So, um, but you know, things that I wanted to accomplish that I didn't. I, I allowed other things to get in the way. Were they more or less important? You know, that, that's to be uh, figured out yet. But, I mean, the, the point is that you need to identify what those things are and why you didn't do them. And then 
restructure your business and your habits going into 2014 so that you don't fall into the same pattern. This is something that we all do. I mean, we all, like you said, we, we fall into a, a comfortable known pattern. Um, so identify those. And, you know, if, you're, if, you've been, if, you've been, if you're one of these guys that have been trying to freelance for the last three or four years, and because I know a few of them, and actually when I started freelancing, I, I, was, I was this guy. Um, people would talk, talk to me and say, hey, Carlos, what are you doing? Oh, I'm starting my freelance business. Two years later, hey, Carlos, what are you doing? Oh, I'm starting my freelance business. We're in this constant perpetual starting mode where we're not quite there yet and we're trying to kick things off. And the, the problem was that, you know, I identified certain things that I, in my behavior that, I, that weren't allowing me to finally go the, yeah, that, that extra mile to actually be in you know, a freelance situation where I was doing it full time. So identify those patterns within yourself. You know, if, if you're looking to get some, something done, but they're not getting done, you know, you can come up with all the excuses on, in the world, but you know, it's either getting done or not getting done. And if it's something that's holding you back, you got to identify what that is and be truthful with yourself. If you need, uh, if, if you need assistance or if you need someone to, to hold you accountable, pick up the phone, call a buddy, you know, someone that you're that you're close enough with that you know will 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 be hard when they need to be hard. So he's gonna light a fire for you, right? Yeah, man. You know, it, it's important. It's important for all of us. Look, we all work very independently and in our own little environments. You know, for for the most part, we're all working individual. Uh, but we need we need that out. You know, that 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 support from the outside, to people to spur us on and to point things out when we start kidding ourselves. You know, there's a lot of times when I'm like. BSing myself, and I say, "Oh no, this is more important right now." No, it's I'm, I'm trying to avoid something, yeah. and it's important for me to have somebody like Bob to point that out for me, and uh, and vice vice versa. So I mean, you you don't do yourself any favors by, you know, sugarcoating stuff for yourself and fooling and kidding yourself into what you're really doing. If your if your goal is to start freelancing and you've been in this perpetual I'm starting to freelance mode for the last three or four years, it's time to wake up and say, look, either I'm going to make a go of it or I'm not, or I'm just going to be happy having it as a side gig and, and that's it, you know. But but honesty and honesty with yourself, I think it's the most important part. So identify, you know, why you want it, what you want to do, where you fell short, and, you know, be committed to resolve it, to change those patterns in yourself. Right. And also, you know, we were talking about this a little bit before too. Um, there becomes this sort of odd thing that happens with familiarity, you know. So, like we were talking about how um, we have this little list in our head of things that we need to do, and so when those things come rolling up again, we're like, oh yeah, yeah, okay, I'm going to get to that, I'm going to get to that, you know, because and you've already sort of thought it through. Now, I think one of the things that might help um, is to start to um, uh, to make a list or some sort of um, uh, you know, some, something where you can kind of check these items off as you're going through, some, a, a constant reminder, you know. So if I say to Carlos, hey, Carlos, you know, um, I was thinking about putting up these testimonials on my site, you know, and then Carlos is like, great, okay, you know, so we, we put that on the list. Um, that way, the next week when I start to look into these things, I don't glaze over them because I'm like, oh, yeah, that's on the list. That's going to happen. It's on the list. Um, it's something that we did, we have to deal with immediately, right? Okay, so you're going to put testimonials up, get them up by next week. You know, don't don't just kind of slough it off because it's on the list. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying here? We were talking about this earlier. You're looking at me with that. No, like, no, yeah. What's that Bob talking about? But this is one of those things that happens to me a lot, and I'm sure it happens to a lot of other people too. Is we get these these ideas in our heads about what we're going to do. Um, and we almost work it through to a point where we're satisfied with it, you know. We say, yeah, that's, okay, I'm going to make that happen. It's going to be just like this. And then, um, you know, it, it becomes just an item in your head. It's gonna, we're going to address that later. I will get to it, you know. And the problem is later never comes. A year comes rolling around. And, 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 and uh, so I'll give you this example. You know, last year, <laughs> Carlos and I were talking about we're going to put testimonials up on, on your website. And I was like, yeah, that's going to be great. I'm going to do that. All of a sudden, a year comes rolling by, and I'm just like, you know, I didn't realize that. I, I never put those up, you know. So I went back last night and I put them up. You know, it took me ten minutes. It was that video that you saw. That. Yeah. yeah, it was that video that you re that you that I reposted that you saw. That's that right. Video. That's right. And that's why I think creating some sort of checklist or something, you know, like we we were talking about that blueprint, you know, last year, um, which which is a great example, you know. So you you start to put down these items. What do I want to have happen? And and you, you know you can um, you can assign 
you know, an order to them in, in order of importance or whatever. But I think it's great to have, you know, a little checklist. And so when when you work in the buddy system, and, and this is, you know, kind of one of the things that we do is we, we look at, okay, what are we going to talk about this week? And then when we're done with it, when we wrap up, we say, okay, here's what we covered, and what do we want to get into next week? That way, each week you're moving forward. You've got something that you're going to do, and you're just doing it week by week. So, you know, when Carlos and I get together, we're going to talk about this week. Okay, um, what do we want to talk about? Well, we're going to put together these um, these little things, uh, these meetings on, on uh, Google Plus, and we're going to we're learn how to use Google Plus, which is <laughs> something we did today. And then, what are we going to do for next week? Okay, well, here are the topics we're going to cover for next week. So now we know we have something that we're working towards. Each week we set a new goal, you know, and then that way it doesn't become like this giant overwhelming list. We're just we're picking it apart a little at a time. And it also, if if you stay flexible, you also know that, hey, you know what? Um, maybe what I thought was really important at the beginning of the year, this big giant long list, um, maybe it, you know, I can shuffle that order around a little bit because something may become relevant um, this week. Like I've got a client who needs this particular thing, and you know what? I've been meaning to update my portfolio to reflect that for the longest time, but I didn't do it. Now here's an immediate need for it. Right, so we're going to put that on our list for this week, and then you know we'll look at some of those bigger things, uh, maybe in another week. So that's my two cents, Carlos. Yeah, I think you know, like you said, I, I, it's it's really important that you find the the right support, um, you know, and find someone that's going to complement what you're doing. You know, maybe not someone who's doing exactly what you're doing, and you have the same knowledge, but maybe someone who's got maybe a little experience in different areas than yourself. That way you can work, you can help each other out because if you're both, you know, um, knowledgeable about the same stuff and, and also needing help in the same area, the exact same areas, you're really not going to help support each other very well. So finding the right partner I think is is um, important. Um, uh, you know, aside from that, I mean, you know, it's like what Bob is talking about is like, you know, there's a difference between knowing something and doing something. We all read articles, and I've caught myself in this uh, numerous times. We all read, you know, dozens of articles a week on the internet about you know freelancing, marketing, finding new clients, I'm whatever. Make you know, that happen. Yeah. To, to, yeah right. <laughs> and, you know, and, and you read all these or you see videos or you see maybe interviews or whatever, you hear interviews and you hear information and you feel like you know it, um, but you don't take action on it. And I and I find this a lot uh, with my coaching clients where they they think they know something because they've heard it before, mm -hmm. but they haven't really done anything about it. Uh, so so we have a tendency that if we've heard something before and we hear it again, we automatically block it out. Like, oh yeah, I know that. Yeah, but that's exactly Knowing what something and doing about. something are very, two very totally different uh, situations. So, you know, so part of doing is also doing the right thing. So, you know, you can, you can, a lot of figuring out of what you need to do and what the right things to do and what the wrong things to do uh, is a lot of just trial and error and, you know, just getting in there and doing it. And that can be, you know, pretty uh, time intensive uh, learning curve. But, you know, sometimes it's got to be done. But, you know, the important things that you're taking action and you've identified, you know, your, your, your end goal and to the best of your ability, you know, yourself and by with, a, with an accountability partner, figure out the next, you know, the, map out the, the steps for you um, so that you can get on those things. And if something doesn't work, you know, you go back and you change it and, you know, and, and you continue moving forward. You know, when I started freelancing, it, it was the same thing. I mean, I tried freelancing for about two years before I was able to finally make it work. I learned a lot of things along the way. I didn't quit, uh, obviously, but, you know, there were things along the way where, steps along the way where I could have quit and I, and I could have said, this doesn't work, you know. And it wasn't that getting freelance, you know, being a freelancer, full-time freelancer wasn't possible for me. It was just that the way I was approaching it and and the things that I was putting into play uh, weren't working out for me to, to really get me to that point. Um, so it's just a matter of sticking with it, being able to identify things, and then really you know having the accountability to move forward with that. Yeah, and I think you bring up an important point, which is some things are not going to work. And, and i got to be honest with you, I've probably learned more from the things that didn't work than from the things that did work, you know? And so, if you if you run into something that doesn't work, uh, don't consider it a failure. Just consider it a learning experience. You know. Um, yeah. The, you know, I was on the phone with a with an illustrator the other day, uh, and we were talking about um, one of those. Uh, ad, I think it was ad base. 
uh, one of their lists that he was sending uh, emails, you know, emails and, and postcards to. And I think he'd been sending stuff out for the last year, year and a half. He'd gotten some responses, but really hadn't gotten any work from it. So sure. we switched up the, the way he was sending stuff out and really created um, uh, more of a, a, a full-fledged three, four-part campaign versus just sending stuff out individually every, you know, every quarter or three times a year or two times a year right. uh, to really make more of an impact. And, you know, his question was, well, you know, will it work, you know? And I said, I have no idea. You know, this, this is why yeah, you're trying let's it. Find you know? out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what you're doing right now isn't working. So let's mix it up and find out. I mean, that's the whole point of marketing and advertising. It's not that there's a guarantee. It's that you're looking to find out as quickly as possible what doesn't work so you can eliminate it from things that you're doing. Um, you know, and and in failing, you know, people say, you know, you fail your way to success. I mean, that's that's what they're talking about. By by failing and identifying the things that don't work, you then are left with fewer things that are a possibility for that that will work. So you yeah. you it helps you focus on those things and not focus on the things that aren't working. So um, so you know, in terms of just getting out there and not and not quitting on yourself, you know, understand that failing is part of the whole process. Yeah, and it's an important part too. Um, when we talk about like you know the willingness to to fail too, that's another thing that I think a lot of people freeze up. You know, they're thinking like everything has to be absolutely perfect in order to make it, you know, to, to even take a chance on it. You know, and, and I hear a lot of artists talk about how they would love to be doing certain things, but they're going to wait until they have you know another piece in their portfolio, or they're going to work on this or do that or whatever until it until it's just right, and then get and, and and then send it out. You know, but the problem with that that philosophy is that perfection never comes. You know, right. it, it just never comes, and so you you again, this is one of those procrastination things. I think that a lot of us experience. You know, when I get to this level, I'm going to do that. That then you'll see. Then I'll be perfect. But it's always there's always one little thing that's going to hold you back. It's funny. I was I was on the phone with an artist yesterday, and mm -hmm. you know she was already selling uh, uh, some artwork that she was already starting to produce. She's been producing it for about a year. It was a, she changed directions about a year, year and a half ago, right, right. and she started producing this work, and she's been selling it. And you know she told me well you know this is like the most effortless. You know what I was doing before. It yeah, seemed yeah. like I was having to hunt people down, and you right, know. So and, everything's and, all lined up now, right? Right, yeah. right. So yeah. everything's all lined up. You know, things are coming together, and, and it seems like people are just coming to her to get what what she's you know the paintings she's doing, mm -hmm. and and she says, um, and she says, uh, but she doesn't have a website up. So I said, so she says, well, you know, but I'm waiting to see to. I'm looking at maybe taking another couple of classes, painting classes, to see if I can perfect certain areas before I get a website up and right. you know to make sure that you know the the uh, the work is fine and I said you're you you just told me you have like a bunch of people chasing you down to buy your work you're I think you're there <laughs> already just how much more perfect is it gonna get yeah, yeah yeah you know I mean you know, you're doing it I mean art is an evolution you're never you never get there uh, you're constantly changing you know so in that evolution you know when when does it stop it doesn't so I mean it's working now put it up there uh, you know and it's, you, you, you're going to evolve. Your work is going to change, and when it does, you know you'll be bringing in new people for that. But it's That's already right. working. Get to it. That's right. Yeah, and you're not going to start at the top, you know. So, so it's going to take some growth to get there. I remember when I first started out. When I go back and look at some of the work that I was selling to people, I just cringe, you know. I'm like, wow, you know. And at the time, um, I knew that I, I had some room for growth, and I knew that it, you know it was going to take me uh, some time to get up to that next level, but you know, waiting for you to, waiting for that growth to happen before you begin your your journey, um, I think is a mistake. You're, you're going to waste a lot of time, and it's really just in their form of, of, of procrastination, you know. So, right. so get over it. Get that stuff out there. You know you need to do it. Yeah, I mean, it's like those people that, you know, they're trying to freelance forever and forever and forever, and then, you know, it's uh, they're 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 constantly trying to make things perfect before they move to the next step. So right. so anyway, so let's recap on this, Bob. Before we get too long, we don't even yeah. know if this is being recorded. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm anxious to find out. <laughs> well, you know, it's been another good conversation between you and I. If it doesn't, Carlos. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So so what are we talking about here? So the first thing I think that we're going to be doing is we want to. Um, identify what your goals are for the upcoming year. Right. So we want to, 
get a little list together and we're going to talk about you know some of the things that we want to make happen that are different maybe some of the things that you've been thinking about for years that you just never implemented you know so get that list together uh, the second thing is to go ahead and grab a buddy or to uh, find yourself a group and to start holding each other accountable um, and meet you know on a regular basis if it's once a week once every other week even if it's just once a month at least you're getting you know at least you're making something happen uh, and then the third thing uh, we talked about was um, be careful of falling into the trap of familiarity, where if something is familiar to you that you don't end up ignoring it, thinking like, oh, I'll just get to that later. Uh, and then finally, the last thing that we talked about um, was, you know, making these things stick, getting them, getting them to actually happen, you know. So, so it's the follow through, I think, that we're really concerned with. Um, you know, in in this coming year, is 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 making this stuff happen and and sticking with it. You know, don't wait for perfection. Make it happen now, right? And, like, and one one last thing I want to say about, yeah, one, one last thing I want to say about the accountability partner thing because that's an important piece. And I found that you know a lot of times you know that I belong to uh, several masterminds here in South right. Florida, right. Um, which involve you know uh, a lot of different entrepreneurs and different business type. Uh, people in different involved in different industries. Mm -hmm. um, one of the important things that I've I've learned from creating a mastermind or or finding an accountability partner, most people think it's very easy. You just dial up your buddy and, and you do it. In a lot of cases that's not going to work. And I'm going to tell you why just so that you you're well aware of it up front. So you don't think that it's it's not something that's going to work. It's just that the approach was was might have had uh, is, is a little questionable. If you find someone who you're too comfortable with, chances are they're not going to call you out on your shit. And I wouldn't comfort or if it's personality. Is that a personality thing? Do you think? Well, it, it's a, it's a it could be a personality thing. I mean, some people don't like telling you how it is. Sometimes people, if they're too comfortable, if they're a good friend, for example, may not say certain things, or maybe their 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 ability to able to give you the feedback that you need their experience isn't where it needs to be to give right. you the right feedback. Right. So, so don't yeah, so don't pick somebody who's gonna coddle you. If you wanna yeah, if you wanna make right. some progress, yeah, call up Carlos, he'll yell at you. Yeah, here you go. You know, <laughs> find some find somebody who's look look listen, if if you're committed to getting something done, if you're really, really committed and you're re ready to do whatever it takes to get it done, which is what, you know, starting your freelance business or even if you're getting out of freelance business and starting something new, that level of commitment is really, really important. So you need to find someone who is just as committed as you are. That's important. someone who's not going to come up with excuses. In my coaching, I tell people at the end of the day, you either have excuses or you have results. You know, there's a lot of time when I have to look myself in the mirror at night when at the end of the day and say I'm a failure because I had these things to do today and they didn't get done. You know, yeah, I mean, I, some of the coaches that I coach with are, are very strict about that. They, they'll, right. they'll, they'll tell you, I mean, if these are things that you need to get done and they're not getting done, you fail. I mean, it's easy as that. It's, there is no gray area. Right. It's success and failure are black and white. You yeah. know, if you want to live in the middle, that's like that living on the fence area where, you know, things can happen, things may not happen. If you want to achieve something, you need to develop that black or white mentality. And at the end of the day, either you did the things or you didn't do the things. And tomorrow, you'll either be closer or farther away from your goal. And that, it's right. that simple. And you need to have someone who's going to call you out and be just as committed as you are. It's the most important thing. And again, have someone that can, can add value to you. Don't be afraid. Usually, usually, like in a mastermind group, for example, I, I strive to be the dumbest person in the room because that way I'm learning something. You know, I don't want to be like... <laughs> where people are, where I'm like teaching everybody, I'm not learning anything. You yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah. and usually, you know, being the dumbest person in the room, that's that's pretty a uh, achievable goal for me. So. <laughs> so, <laughs> I got that one down. I got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got that one. I don't down. even need to add that. But, to my but you know what I mean? It's like you you want people who are going to push you forward. You're not going to want people who will want to stay in their comfort zone and therefore dragging you back, trying to keep you in your comfort zone. It's very important that you find people who are extremely motivated. Don't care about looking the fool for a, for a while, as long as they can get closer to their goal, and that should be your goal as well. I mean, if you want to achieve success in anything that is that you're doing, right? And yeah, and I wanted to just add one thing to that. You, you need to have somebody who believes in what you're doing. So if you if you feel like you can reach a certain goal or you want to reach a certain goal, uh, you need somebody who's going to lift you up. 
All right. So we're so I guess we we can describe them as what balloons and anchors, right? So you want to surround yourself with balloons, people who lift you up rather than anchors who weigh you down. So if you if you choose a partner, um, you're going to need to you're going to need to choose somebody who is going to believe in what you what you think you're going to do, right? So uh, there will be times when you really just you find yourself in the deepest, darkest doubt you've ever had. You, you, you look at what you're doing and you're like, this is never going to happen. I, what am I thinking? I, I can't even decide that I wanted to do this. That's when you call your buddy, you know, and your buddy talks you in off the ledge. <laughs> and I've been there a time or two, you know. I, I remember like, <laughs> talking to Carlos and I'm like, you know, what what do I do? What am I doing? Why am I doing this? Who am I to be doing this? You know, he's like, get get that stuff out there. Come on, you know what you've been you've been doing this for twenty years. You know, so that's the kind of person that you need behind you. Somebody who's going to give you that little nudge when you start to fall into you know that self doubt. So yeah, you know that self doubt is we all have it. You know, we oh, all have a little yeah. good guy, bad guy on the shoulder, and you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, and and yeah. we're always listening to that. But you know, so anyway, let's not rant about this anymore. Mm -hmm. I think I think we've made our point. Yeah. Uh, this is this Google Hangout is something that Bob and I this year are committed to doing at least. We're going to try to do it every week. I mean, that's our that's our commitment. Uh, and and hopefully we'll get better at this. So it doesn't take an hour of setup prior to every Google <laughs> Hangout. <laughs> so it doesn't take two hours to record a twenty minute video. But uh, yeah. But again, that's our learning curve, and, and and we're committed to 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 look foolish on this thing if you know if it need be for a while until we get it right. So uh, you know this is something that we're committed to doing every week. We'll either have interviews with other people, or it'll be conversations with Bob and I, maybe tackling questions, maybe even doing Q, live Q and A calls where you guys can call in and, and we can discuss some of the things that you're struggling with and see if we can help out in any way. Um, so anyway, that's that, and I think you know if you if you if you're watching this, if it did record, leave your comments or questions. Let us know how you feel about this, um, what your thoughts on it, maybe some of your goals for 2014, maybe some areas that you've identified that you need to work on. Share that with us and see if we can start a, a, a constant dialogue moving forward for 2014, because this is really what Bob and I are really pushing to do with Drawn by Success, and also for Bob Teaches Art, his new uh, Bob's new new. Uh, art site, which we'll talk about in, in future shows. Um, but you know, if there's any questions, we want the interaction. It's the whole purpose of doing these live Google Hangouts. Uh, this one was just basically Bob and I uh, to work things out. Eventually, moving forward, what we'll do is we'll make it live, and we'll you know you'll be able to jump in and and ask questions and and be more interactive, which is really what we're shooting for. Yeah, and I'd love to hear you know some of the things that you guys are struggling with too, because that way we can. About it. You know, it's funny that um, you, you, sometimes you think you're in this little bubble and you're alone with these things that you're struggling with, but, you know, chances are that there are probably a lot of other artists going through the same thing that you're going through. So if you have something that you want us to address or you're, you're, you, know, you have something you're wrestling with, uh, pop a comment up there and, and we'll see if we can tackle it. Yeah. All right. Well, that's, uh, I think that does it. Bob, let's go find out if this thing recorded or not. <laughs> I'm going to cry if it didn't. <laughs> All right, guys, I uh, hope you enjoy the uh, recording. We'll, we'll see, see you next week. Next week. Yeah. All right, later. How do you shut right. this thing off, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> we'll clean that up in post-production. <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll just leave it on until next week. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably be easier just to leave it on until next week. All right, see you later, Bob. See ya. <laughs>